quantum reality. Um, sometimes <clears throat> at home, people come to me and they say, Dr. Schaefer, your book is very difficult to read. And then I often say, well, <clears throat> for all people who have problems with English language, I have a Russian edition. <clears throat> And actually, there is Portuguese edition. I rewrote it myself in German, and there's a Spanish edition. Actually, I've told this story before, but today I repeated it for a special reason. I realize that it is a challenge to understand basic concepts of quantum physics if you have not studied physics. So today, I'll do something very special like I've never done before in such talks, to really try for you to understand, understand these sentences. <clears throat> the basis of the material world is not material. The basis of this thing is not matter. Reality is indivisible wholeness. Things seem to be separate, but they are not. We are all connected. Consciousness is a cosmic property. There is a part of reality that we cannot experience, but it is there and it affects us. How all this makes sense, I hope to explain to you. So that will be the first part of my talk. The first concept, that you, maybe the only one that you have to understand, is not even physics. It's a philosophical con uh, concept, is the concept of potentiality. Am I too fast for the translator? I don't know. Pardon? Um, the concept of potentiality. It is Aristotle's thesis that there are three modes of existing or being. Normally you would say there are two modes. Something either exists or it does not exist. But Aristotle said there is a third mode. In addition to actually being, not being, there is potentially being. So this is his concept of potentia. Surprisingly, the concept has come out again in quantum physics. It is a characteristic property of microphysical objects things like electrons, protons, they can exist in potentiality states. In such states, they are not part of the empirical world, but they have the potential to appear in it. I must explain that. When you look out into the world, what do you see? You see things, material structures. They are typically made up of <coughs> material particles, mass units, molecules, atoms, electrons, and so on. In addition, we see dynamic phenomena, particles in motion. Among the dy dynamic phenomena, special are waves. Waves <clears throat> can be formed when large numbers of material particles move in a coherent way. For example, when many water molecules move together, they make water waves. Waves as phenomena, they have different properties than particles. Waves are continuous. Particles are discrete. Waves are extended in space. Particles are localized. There are typical physical properties of waves. They are called interference and diffraction. Okay, <clears throat> when two waves meet in space, they interfere with each other. They add. Oops, it's wrong. Um, they can do it in two ways. They can do it in such a way, when they are in phase, crests are on top of crests. 
they add constructively, the result is a big wave. <clears throat> they can also meet out of phase, that the crests of one are on top of valleys of the other. Then they cancel. You, I have wonderful friends, they take me everywhere. Dr. Cunha takes me to Sposend. Dr. Pan takes me to Ophir. There's this ocean. It's, it's beautiful. It's, you have to love this place. So, you have seen these things. There are waves. Sometimes they become big, then they become small. They interfere. It's all not much to understand. There is one other property <coughs> that is characteristic for waves. When a wave train moves in space and it strikes an obstacle in its path, the waves bend around the corner. It's just what they do. So the wave goes this way but also goes around the corner. We call this diffraction. Because of diffraction, when waves hit a wall with a slit in it, with a hole in it, they bend around the corners and behind the slit we see the wave spread out in all direction. Okay? Easy. So, when waves strike a wall with two slits in it, what happens? Behind each slit, waves spread out, therefore they interfere, they superimpose, along some lines, they cancel. They're out of phase. If this is light, then there is darkness. Along other lines, they reinforce, so there is brightness. At the detector or on a screen, one sees an interference pattern. It's a system of fringes, alternating areas of darkness and brightness, like you see here. This is a graph of the intensities. No intensity, a little more, 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 and so on. So, this is an interference pattern. That's what it looks like. Made with light waves. Okay? Now, when you have a wall and two slits in it and you shoot a machine gun, the bullets go through the slits. They don't interfere. They make piles, two piles. After some time, the two piles grow together. Bullets don't cancel. Somebody shoots you through the heart, you're dead. Two bullets coming at the same time in your heart will not keep you alive. Never. So, this is what bullets do. Now, what we do, we don't take bullets, we don't take waves, we take electrons. Electrons are elementary particles. Actually, we know very well their mass is 0.009 kilogram. 9 times 10 to the minus 31st kilogram. Their size is less than 0.001 meter. Less than 1 times 10 to the minus 18 meters. So, they are tiny things, they are indivisible. And when we send one electron after another in isolation through these slits, one after another appears at the detector. Each one leaves a tiny mark, like a little bullet. They come like this. But you cannot aim electrons. If you aim up, it may fly down. You aim down, it may fly up. You cannot, each electron will impact the detector in a principally unpredictable way. Principally random. So you see, here you see the result of an experiment. I don't know whether you can see this. Oops, don't do that. Here are tiny dots. Each of these marks is the arrival of an electron. So, 
when the electron has hit here, you cannot know where the next electron will hit. Maybe this one, or this one, or this one. The sequence is completely unpredictable. It's random. But even though it is unpredictable, it is not arbitrary. Because in the accumulation of many impacts, a hidden order comes to the fore. An interference pattern. Do you see that? In other words, single, okay, here the software has messed something up, but it doesn't matter. Single random events are connected in a hidden order. We cannot see that order, but it is there. Here's an interference pattern made with electrons. Okay, now we have a problem. Oops, this is also a problem. An interference pattern can only be made by waves that come through both slits. But the electrons, they are little bullets. They are indivisible. How is it possible that single, indivisible, localized particles can create an interference pattern? The answer is as simple as it is unexpected. When electrons are left alone, they become waves. When we see them, they are particles. When we leave them alone, they become waves. Electrons do it, material particles do it. Left alone, they spread out in space in a wave-like form. If we interact with this wave, the wave contracts to a dot, the particle. We have the wave, interaction leads to the dot, Leaving it alone immediately leads to the evolution of the wave again. When, when the wave train into which the particle has dissolved strikes a barrier, it gives rise to interference like classical waves, like water waves. It's just like that. Now you have to ask, what kind of waves are these? What is the nature of the waves? into which the particles dissolve. You have to think about it this way. What does the interference pattern give us, the intensity pattern? The intensity pattern tells us how many electrons on the average are striking at a certain region. So, <clears throat> you don't really know where an electron will hit. But if the intensity is high, you know that chances are high to find an electron. Where the intensities are low, chances to find an electron are practically zero. So from this you can understand that the interference pattern is a probability profile. Where it is high, probabilities are high. Where it is zero, probabilities are zero. The interfering waves are probability waves. They provide probabilities to find a particle in space. What are probabilities? Probabilities are numbers. They are ratios of numbers, like 50-50, 10 or 20. Probability waves are empty. They carry no mass or energy just information on numerical relations. Nevertheless, the visible order in the universe is determined by the waves, the kind of waves that I have just described. When a material particle dissolves in a probability wave, it is no material particle anymore. It becomes a mathematical form, a set of numbers.